joining us for the Morrow Galt Water and Wastewater Renewal Project online meeting. We appreciate you joining us this evening. I'm Emily Chancellor, and I'm in our public information office here at Austin Water. I'm going to help uh, guide us through the meeting. We'll start with some welcome and logistics. We'll spend a little time explaining how you can engage with us on the Zoom platform. Our project team will introduce themselves. Um, then our project manager will take us through an overview of the project. And we will take questions and answers at the end of the, presenta the brief presentation. So I want to ask, uh, first of all, my colleague Lydia, who is our technology host, to go through how to engage with us during the meeting. Hey, everybody. So I noticed that some of you are joining on a phone, so I'll speak to you first since you can't see much. During the Q&A section that Emily is going to facilitate, if you want to ask a question or speak with us, I'll be able to allow you to talk. And the way that I'll know if you need to ask us a question is on your phone to raise your hand to ask a question, you'll dial star nine and that'll let me know to unmute you. So I'll unmute you and then you'll click star six if you still are muted. Most of the time when people are calling in, you just have to do star nine to raise your hand and then I take it from there. But if we can't hear you, you'll click star six. Those of you that are on a computer or an iPad, if you take your cursor and you scroll to the bottom of this black Zoom screen, you should see a Q&A box. There's an image right there and a chat function. So the Q&A is where you can type questions that you have for any of the panelists. And the chat function is just if you want to comment on something. Um, if you need technical assistance, you can type in the chat and I will help you out with that. And I think that's it. I don't think I, I missed anything. But again, if you have any technical questions, things about Zoom um, during the presentation, just hit chat and ask away. I'm here to help. Thanks, Lydia. Appreciate your help and support during this meeting. Uh, and I do want to mention with the storms in town, some of our team members have had a uh, power dropping out. So we kind of have some backup plans. If someone drops out, then we will... Um, pick up where they left off. Also, we will provide a recording for this meeting and we will post the presentation. So if you've joined by phone, uh, you'll have access to that information on our project website uh, following the meeting. So now we're gonna go to introductions and ask our project manager to kick us off. Good evening, everyone, and I would like to thank you all for attending the um, online public meeting for um, the Morrow and Galt project. I am Demira Wyatt, and I'm the project manager uh, from Public Works in the Project Management Division. And Mr. Beatty, would you like to introduce yourself and everyone else? Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Mike Beatty. I'm going to be the guy that represents the city out there in the field uh, for this project. Hi, Good afternoon. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Michaela Sanch. I am the Austin Water Project Sponsor. I'm for this project, which basically means that I represent the Austin Water Utility. Good afternoon, I'm Diego Radford, and uh, I'll be representing the contractor throughout this project. Thank you all, and I'm Emily Chancellor, and I will work on communications for the project. So I work on communications for construction projects, uh, Austin Water construction projects all around the city, and I will be a contact for you throughout this project, as well as the project team members you've just met. And uh, now we're gonna go, um, through, uh, do an overview of the project and just wanted to let you know the instructions that Lydia gave you about how to submit questions. We will repeat those at the end of the presentation. So we'll make sure that you all have an opportunity to get all your questions answered and, and to engage with us during the meeting. All right, Tamira, I will hand it back over to you. 
Thank you, Ms. Emily. And again, I'm Demira Wyatt, the project manager. And just to give a brief project overview, this project will replace approximately 2,152 linear feet of water lines, 16,089 linear feet of wastewater lines. The inspection of wastewater lines in the area, they've shown that the lines are reaching the end of their useful life. So that's the reason for us <clears throat> completing this project. In addition, two fire hydrants will be replaced and some will be re what some will be placed in new locations to meet current code requirements for firefighting. And the construction is started in late May 2021. So some of you all may have seen some of the um, contractors out doing some preliminary activities such as setting up the erosion and sediment control uh, devices and surveying the um, area. And the project will take about 24 months to complete. On this side slide, you'll see the project location. And the green lines represent where the wastewater needs are, which stated before is about 16,089 linear feet of um, wastewater lines and the water lines are in blue. And there's about 2,152 linear feet of wastewater lines, uh, water lines that are gonna, gonna be replaced, excuse me. And on this slide, we'll show the places where there's gonna be some boring sites and traffic detours with the project um, between Lazy Lane, between Dale Drive and Robalo Road, <clears throat> they'll be closed and detours will be in place. Mr. Diego, would you like to go over any of those? Good afternoon. Basically, this slide is to uh, show this is what we, we, we expect to be the longest shutdown. Uh, we will have to close a section of this road. Every property owner, uh, which will be affected, will have full access to their driveways. Um, so basically, this is just to show the longest periods of time, depending on the, the boring um, and the rock conditions, we will be able to uh, work through it quickly or it will be uh, a uh, longer um, amount of time. Thank you, Mr. Diego. And this slide just shows in the overview of the project of the construction types that will be used for installing the pipe. We'll be doing open cut trenching and carried in, pay in place pipe lining where the pipe will just be lined that's currently in place to have a greater infrastructure than what's already installed out there. And Ms. Michaela, would you like to say anything else about this slide? Um, not, I guess if anyone has any technical questions, um, feel free to ask them. I know some, most people tend to get kind of bored with the, the finer points of sewer in, installation. Um, but we are, all of these were, all of these methods were based upon the current conditions of the pipe and what would best, um, go where, um, and create the least disturbance. And this slide just continues over to show that some portions of the project where we showed previously in the slides where the bore pits will be located, there will be boring operations where there will be encasement pipe that will push through the new pipe to be installed. And um, those locations will send out notifications to everyone as we get through those phases of work. So as far as what to expect during construction, the contractor, they will use heavy equipment to dig trenches for the new water and wastewater lines. The roads will be patched after the line is installed and all roads will be repaved at the end of the project. And throughout the construction phases, 
The crews will work in front of your property a number of times to complete each phase of the project, including excavation, pipe installation, temporary paving, testing, repairs, if necessary, and final paving. As far as the right-of-way is concerned, most work will be limited to the right-of-way. In many cases, the right-of-way, excuse me, will Ms. Michaela or Diego take over for a second? Um, yes, sure. So as Samira was saying, most work will be limited to the right-of-way. In many cases, the right-of-way is located about 10 to 15 feet behind the curb, an area you may considered to be part of your lawn. Um, as shown in the picture, it is pretty much where that meter box is in most cases. Um, the city um, the city clean out. Um, it may be necessary to remove landscaping or other personal items in the right of way before your new service lines are connected. Um, Diego, do you have anything to add to that? I do not. Um, <clears throat> just basically it's it's on a it's on a case by case situation. So if you guys have any questions, once once we are close to your house, feel more than free to come outside and and I'm gonna speak to us and and I'll gladly um, address every every scenario differently. And in those cases as well, when there are different service locations or private laterals that goes into the separate property locations, we'll work with each property owner individually to um work out a plan and locate all of the existing items that may be located within your property that may be within our right of way and how we'll go about uh transitioning into installing into the new lines that will be <clears throat> placed so still continuing with what to expect during the construction as far as the trees, the tree trimming, the contractor will need to do some tree trimming over the right of way where the trees are hanging lower than 14 feet. And Mr. Mike Beatty or uh, Simon, would you like to elaborate on that portion a little bit more? Yeah, this is Mike Beatty. I'm gonna be the guy on the ground out there, the uh, on-site inspector. So it's not, uh, every tree i mean it kind of depends where they're at uh the pipeline may be as this slide is showing it may be on the right side so we, we won't have to touch that tree at all it can be eight feet off the ground you know and we'll be okay we'll, you know because we're avoiding it all together but in some instances they will uh have to do some minor trimming and uh you know of course the city ordinance requires us to do that a certain way uh where to cut and how to uh, treat and dress any you know pruning activities you know with the saw cuts what kind of paint and stuff to use so that's that's about that on that but if we do any trimming uh, the property owner will be notified in advance and we'll do everything we can to you know minimize that and to miss trees thank you Thank you, Mr. Mike. And also we would like to state that in some cases, streets will be closed and detours will be provided. You will always have access to your home for brief periods, driveway access may be limited, but as we've stated before, it's a case by case basis. And it's where we're always remaining in contact with the property owner to, um, as Ms. Emily provide those notices of where we're gonna be working in different phases of the work, then we'll work with the different property owners to let them know where we're gonna be working and maintain the access to where you'll have um, access to in, inside of your home as far as the driveway in and out. Utility services, at some point, your water or wastewater service will be temporarily interrupted to connect to the, to the new line but most likely just for a few hours on a single day. We will notify you via flyers posted on the door prior to turning off the water. Emergency outages are possible should a water line break during construction. And that would just be on an emergency case. Um, 
usually we give a, please correct me, Mr. Beatty or Mr. Ortha, at least 48 hours of when we're going to do any type of shutouts as far as the lines to switch over or test. Yeah, that's correct, ma'am. Thank you. Our work hours for the project are generally 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. Some weekend work will be scheduled as required and as well, we'll put that in flyers and notifications as we can. And most of the time that is just as the weather is permitted, where we're able to go in and do things uh, according to schedule as planned as the contractor have already included. And there may be some times where we may have to go and do um, additional work over the weekend in order to maintain our schedule. Project communications. Are you gonna go over this one, Ms. Emily, or would you like for me to take this one? I, I can, I can go over this one. Thank you, ma'am. Sure, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we do have on our project website, which is austintexas.gov slash Galt, we have a link there where you can sign up to get email updates throughout the project. And I'll make sure we put that link on in the chat. So if you haven't gone there to sign up, that would be the best way to get news about this project. We will try to update you when the crews are moving to a new section um, so you'll know where they're coming next and uh, we'll just provide announcements and updates about the work. Also, it was mentioned previously, if there is a planned water shutoff, uh, Mike Beatty or someone on his team will put a notice on your door 48 hours in advance. Uh, because there's just a small amount of water line replacement on this project that I wouldn't expect that would be a big impact to customers. Um, and you know, we, we are here to try to make this construction project that we acknowledge is going to be disruptive as, as um, easy as possible. So we know that providing good information and being responsive is, is our goal. And we, we work really hard to do that. So um, you'll be hearing from us and we're available if you have questions. Um, Mike or other members of the team can meet with you there on site. We can talk by phone do a quick um, Teams or our Zoom meeting. We want to be responsive to your, to your needs during the project. So that ends our project overview and I'm glad to see some questions are already coming in. So just as a reminder, if you have joined by phone and you would like to speak, please press star nine. If you are online, uh, if you can click on that Q and A uh, button and start submitting your questions. If you have joined online and you would rather ask your questions um, rather than type them in, we also will be glad to hear from you. You can um, raise your hand. I think there's a, a feature there to raise your hand or just type into the Q&A. I'd like to speak. And we do have two uh, hand raises that have been okay. up for a while. So Emily, if you want me to tell you the order I can. Yeah, that can, would be great. That would be great. Let's it. just get right into it. So yeah, tell me. Um, yeah, so the first that I'll unmute is Celeste and Andrew, and they have a question, and I will go ahead and Celeste and Andrew, I'm going to click allow to talk, so you'll be unmuted in just a second. Can you hear me? All right. Can you hear me? Well, I, I submitted my question in writing. I'm a little bit concerned about the timeliness of communication. I just got the letter about this whole project and the meeting in the mail yesterday, even though the letter is dated May 17th. And so I'm kind of concerned about when are we gonna find out if we need to do anything with our landscaping, um, especially because it's gonna be the summer and people are gonna be traveling at certain times. How much lead time are we gonna get? Okay, so, um, First, I thank you for letting me know that the letter just arrived. It, it did go to our printer and they confirmed it went to the post office that week that it was dated. So mm -hmm. I, I will follow up on that. And I really, that you're right, that is not adequate notice. And I apologize for that. Um, I might let Mike or Diego uh, speak to, I know if you want to maybe just message to the panelists your address, then um, one of them probably could come by and like, talk to you specifically about the project in front of your home. 
Uh, I know that's an option. And as far as like how much notice they typically give, I'd let Mike and or Diego talk about that. But as far as if anyone wants to send us your um, address and your specific question about your property, uh, just send it just to the panelists. Let us know how to reach back out to you if you'd like an email or a phone call, or if you'd like someone to drop by. And we'd be glad to work with you to answer specific questions about your property. Okay, thank you. Sure. Diego or Mike, do y'all want to talk about like how um, how you coordinate with uh, neighbors in advance of starting work on their street? Yes, I'll be more than happy to to address a few of those questions. Uh, good afternoon, Celeste. Basically, we have a uh, twenty four to forty eight hour no parking signs that go up um, prior to being in the area. Uh, so most likely, that's a good indication that we're getting prepared to uh, to start. Um, that's a good indication to start that we're going to be in, in that vicinity in regards to, um, being in the right of way per se, uh, behind the curb and gutter, how we normally like to work is we like to put the main pipe down, which will go somewhere in the street. And then we fall back and do the services. So you'll see us kind of pass by your house twice. Most of the time on the first pass, we like to inform the property owners if we see any obstacles or any nice plants in the way. Um, we like to knock on the door and say, hey, we're coming back. The service is going to go through here. Um, do you want us to, you know, just kind of try to remove and replace? Um, now, at the same time, I want to clarify, um, we are working in the right of way, so we can't guarantee that any plant we remove and replace will survive they do go through a, a major shock at that time that we would do, you know, we would do our best to take as much caution as we can to put it back. Um, and if you have any rock walls or any um, little ledges, um, our responsibility is to put things back as equal or better than what we found it. So um, again, this is something that by, by case by case scenario, we can address and feel more than happy to um, ask any of the crew members and I can meet you out, out there myself and uh, talk about it. Okay, thank this you. Is, this is Mike Beatty. And, and let me also say this, that uh, the locations of those services, be it water or wastewater, will be staked. So there'll be either a blue stake or a green stake in the right of way behind the curb in your yard that'll indicate where that particular service is going to be, be it wastewater or be it a new water service. So you can actually kind of physically go out there and see, you know, where they're going to dig. And, uh, you know, we can do, you know, minor adjustments, but, uh, but like I said, you'll, you'll be able to see exactly where, uh, where they're going to be digging at in, in the right of way area behind the curb. And, and just to just to expand on that, if if the area hasn't been staked, and I mean like you you want to explore to see more or less where are we coming through, our trench could be probably like a three foot wide footprint, and if you find your clean out, it should be um it should be a green a lid, um that's your water one says wastewater one says water that should be your water and wastewater we should be tying in there so that that should give you a really good um um direction to where where we'll be uh digging that trench to tie into simon i i it looks like you might want to contribute on this did you have your hand up no i didn't but uh okay. i i guess no i didn't um i would like to say something uh i, I would prefer that if the customer has any questions to please uh, get with the inspector who would be on site most of the time. Um, his phone number will be given out so that uh, we will be able to communicate with any customer that has a question or concern. Um, a lot of the times, well, most of the time, there will be a, a uh, locate com locating company who will come by and spray paint on the curb a green spray paint uh, a line, which indicates your services along that, that particular area, or a blue uh, spray paint line, which will indicate your water service. So that would be a great indication of where 
the uh, uh, disturbance will occur. Um, if you have uh, if you have uh, sprinkler systems, those will be addressed on a case by case basis. Um, usually, the contractor doesn't uh, disturb too much of the property, uh, except in these instances where the water and wastewater connections will take place. But if you have any concerns at, at right now, we, we can certainly visit with you next week. Um, either Mike Beatty or myself can come by and we can take a look at your, your uh, area and your address. Uh, and from the plans, we can probably tell you exactly where the lines will be installed. Um, the date and the time it's going to be up to where the contractor is able to start and continue from there. And, and uh, it'll be a, a up to his schedule, but we will try to uh, keep you in the loop of uh, how soon and when we'll be coming by. Thank you, Simon. That's, that's helpful. And I know one customer has sent us their address um, through the chat. So we'll provide that to Simon and Mike, and they will follow up with you. Uh, to meet you out there on, on site or to pro provide the information. Um, so, Lydia, please tell me who's queued up next, who wants to yes. speak. The next two questions came from the Q&A box from Joe. Okay, I'll, I'll read those. We'll get started on those. So Joe asks, if the current pipes are being cased, does that mean that the newly repaired pipes will be narrower than the original ones? And um, so I think that question is about the cured in place uh, pipe approach. I did want to just clarify, I know that um, Tamara presented that. So there'll be three approaches, the trenching, the, the lining, and then the boring. The boring will happen under Anderson uh, Lane. And then the other two approaches will be used at different places in the project. Um, Michaela, do you want to talk a little bit about um, how that pipelining is used and answer if it will make the pipe a little narrower. Yes, sure. Can you all hear me better now? I tried to, sorry. We there can was, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. There was intense rain in my area, so I tried to switch he headsets really quickly, but now it stopped potentially. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so in terms of the CIPP lining, um, it does not, it only reduces the inside diameter of the pipe um, anywhere between a half inch to about two inches maximum. Um, and because these lines are relatively low volume as um, they don't have as much as many services, um, while there is a reduction in that inside diameter, it shouldn't um, affect your area too much um, in terms of service. Um, and it, it, will, it will still convey this um, like an adequate amount of flow. And then I, I'm not 100% sure, and Diego can absolutely correct me, or Demira, um, but in terms of the other trenching and boring, um, there won't be a reduction. The pipes that are going in are not smaller than the ones that are in the ground currently. No, the encasement pipe is larger than the pipe, the diameter of the pipe that's going to be installed. And the trenching um, of the pipe, it will be... Um, I'm not exactly sure what the diameter of that is, but we're not reducing the pipe size at all. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was, I was like, I, I don't want to say 100% sure because I'll probably, um, but yeah. Um, and it looks like Joe wants to speak, so I'm going to go ahead and let them ask their next question out loud. So Joe, I'm going to unmute you or allow you to talk. And you should... Thank you. Um, I actually want to address what we just talked about. Um, I'm not sure that I understand the answers as being an answer to my question. Um, as more homes are built, there'll be more demand for either water or wastewater. And as storms become more frequent and more prolonged, and we've had the longest stretch of rainy weather I remember in a long time, some pretty heavy. Um, there is not going to be any diminishing in the amount of water or wastewater carried in these pipes. So, you know, what do you mean by encasement? And narrowing it by two inches can be a significant amount. I mean, I realize you say it isn't, but 
you know, what the person doing the work says and, and what reality ends up proving later on is not always the same thing, sad to say. So I think this is um, some good feedback. I know that our project teams work with, um, so they, they look at the condition of the pipes to identify areas that need replacement. And they also work with our systems planning team that does look at um, demand and the size of infrastructure that's needed. So I believe all of those assessments have uh, been done and in the areas where the pipelining would um, provide enough capacity um, for what our projections show that that technology has been identified to be used. And I'd love, uh, and I'd yield to the team if there's additional information to provide. Um, yes, backing up, um, Emily, um, the, our systems planning um, team did look over this project and did determine that um, lining those pipes was um, perfectly okay with their projections for um, future development and rainfall um, as well. Like I said, we're not, the only lines that are being reduced are the ones that will be lined with CIPP. Um, and then everything else is either going in at the same size, just um, um, better quality um, or being enlarged. And I think Joe has the next question here. Let me go ahead and read that to you. The, the map right. of lines to be replaced, whether water or wastewater is a patchwork of the entire neighborhood area. So why is the question, is the entire area not assumed to have been laid out with water and wastewater services in the same or similar time frame so that pipes would all be of the same age and in a similar condition. Michaela, do you want to address this and how um, how the team identifies areas that need to be replaced? Yeah, sure. Um, without getting too technical, um, uh, the pipes that are the same age may be in vastly different conditions due to a wide variety of factors. Um, the pipes that were identified in this project were identified due to their condition, um, not necessarily just the age. Um, in terms of the patchwork um, of the neighborhood, I, um, I, that's simply how our project team like um, scoped the project um, and determined where would be what, where this project would fit best in terms of replacing the pipes. Um, but I can get more into specifics about which segments, but I feel like that might bore people. Um, and I can also definitely absolutely follow up with this um, in the future. Well, thanks, Michaela. I think that gives an overview um, and it, it might be helpful for our customers to know. I know um, I'm familiar with hearing from reports from your team that uh, your team sends a camera through the wastewater lines and that's one of the tools you use to assess the condition of pipes. And so that kind of assessment is um, how they determine where to put the investment in to replace old pipes. Um, and Joe, it looks like you want to speak up and you can still do that. You are unmuted. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that you partially answered my question. It was a question of if these are pipes that are in the ground, how does one know what the condition is? Because I know that particularly in, in the case of our house is an old house and some of the wastewater lines interior to the house are not of sufficient size. They should have been larger lines when the house was built and they weren't. And I'm not gonna go smashing walls and, and putting in new lines, but you know, you don't know that in, in former times things were adequately done to today's standards or today's needs. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I know our team is is um considering that and, and looking to, like Michaela said, uh, assess the condition of the pipes as well as the age to determine where replacements are needed. Yeah, that's that's good feedback. So would you like to um, give any other feedback or ask any other questions while you have the floor? Oh, no, I don't think so at this moment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your participation. All right, and Lydia, next, guide me to where I should go next. Yeah. Yeah. So the next is a caller on the phone and your number ends in 1174. So I'm going to go ahead and click allow to talk and then I'm going to hit ask to unmute. So once I see that your microphone is working. 
think we can hear you. Hello? Uh, yes, it seems like uh, your crew started in uh, our neighborhood today. Um, there was uh, there are already flags placed, patches are in the street. There are two of the small cat cats um, parked out there, an orange spray on the ground. And my concern was um, they didn't come on the day that the flyer said they would come, which isn't an issue. And I realized weather's probably had a lot to do with that. But when I went out there to talk to them about my irrigation, um, I noticed where they have flags and orange spray paint is exactly where my irrigation is. And so the crew, the guys were really very nice, but I asked them if there was anyone in charge there that I could speak with about um, the plans and there wasn't. And so I would very much like to talk to somebody since it looks like it's l pretty much literally right on top of where some of my irrigation is. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, since you called in, I think we can take note of your phone number. And would it be okay if Mike Beatty or Simon Orta, who are in charge of inspection, would it be okay if they call you tomorrow or next week and um, they can get your address and even meet you out there if you'd like and, and give you more details? I'm concerned about that because it looks like they're progressing pretty quickly. And okay. You know, I mean, all that is there, so it's like I kind of need to speak to someone sooner than later, I believe. Sure, sure. This Go ahead. Lady, I think I can answer your question, ma'am. What the, uh, the contractor is doing right now, uh, he started on Tisdale, and then he went to the next street to the, I guess it would be to the east, Galt, I think. And what he's doing right now is locating the existing, the old wastewater pipe, and he's locating the services that go to your house, be it gas, water, electric, uh, wastewater, all that. He just, he's uh, just looking for those services so he doesn't break them when he's actually doing the open cut. So they'll spray paint the curb to remind the crew, oh, be careful when you dig here. And uh, of, of course, you know, uh, the irrigation is usually behind the curb. It doesn't run through the street. But when they get to those services, like Mr. Diego said, they'll do the main line in the street and then they'll fall back and then they'll start digging the services. And, uh, uh, you know, and when they start doing that, you know, that's when we start really looking out because we know there's a lot of uh, landscaping irrigation behind the curb in this neighborhood. And, you know, uh, Diego can probably talk to this uh, better than me because he is the contractor. But, yeah, what they're doing, okay. like I said, they're just identifying the existing lines just so that when they go in and start digging, they don't break, you know, your, your water service line and all that. So, uh, Diego, what do you, you know, you got anything to add to that? That is correct, Mike. Um, basically, we will... We will keep an eye out for those, and most likely we will paint a circle if we find the the, the actual sprinkler head. And ma'am, for, for the most part, we are very careful in, in that area, and anything that we actually remove, we will put back, um, per se, sprinkler head, you know, re, reattach the hose if if that's what it comes down to. But we will be more than happy to to get with you just to clear up any any doubts. Thanks. And just FYI, neither one of those streets is the street I live on. And there already has been some digging in the street. And there's not an orange circle around my sprinkler head. So okay. again, that's, it's the timeliness of a callback would be nice. Um, so Mike, you know, can, Mike can we commit that you will call her in the morning? Is that something, do you have availability yeah, that, to call that, her in the fine. morning? No problem. But, okay. Uh, that'd be yeah, like and I then saying, I just, gonna, when they get behind the curb and they fall back after the main line, then they will start marking the sprinkler heads and, and the main, you know, the plastic pipe in the ground that feeds those sprinkler heads. So, uh, at, like I said, after the main line, they'll fall back and then they'll dig very carf carefully. They're going to take out a piece of the curb and gutter and, uh, 99 out of 100 times, they're going to go way underneath your uh, your irrigation lines anyways. 
but I'll be more than happy to, to speak with you, ma'am. Thank you. That would be great. I'll, I'll look for your call in the morning. One last point I just wanted to make, and it might be something you want to add to your communications, is um, when people receive the notice about the day the crew will be arriving, uh, you, you might want to move your cars or your trash cans. Um, they moved our trash cans for us, and so none of our trash cans were picked up because they put them up in the yard. And so you might want to have homeowners prep those areas before your crew comes. Thank you for letting us know about that. If that does happen in the future, um, you can let us know and we will work with Austin Resource Recovery to make sure those are collected. So Great. Well, did that happen what, what, today? what is your trash day out there? Because we, we kind of, we, we do need to know that. Uh, we're this morning, Thursday morning. Thursdays, okay, we got that. So we didn't get our trash picked up. So we're leaving our trash cans out there in hopes they'll come tomorrow, but we'll see. Do you mind telling me your street and I will put a request in with Austin Resource Recovery? Sure, it's Joe Baugh. And Ms. Emily, can we also make sure to just check the other streets as well that are included in the project limits? Yeah. Will you repeat that street name? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Sure, it's Stobar. It's spelled S as in Sam, T as in Tom, O, B, A, U, G, H. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for your answering these questions. Um, Sure, we're glad to. All right, okay. next one is in the chat and then I'm gonna get to you, Chip, but first we've got a question from Josh in the chat, Emily. Okay, so Josh is asking, uh, can he get a sense of how long construction will take on each block or so of the work? So I know this is always a, a difficult one to answer, um, Demira or... Is there any guidance we can give on how long work is expected on each block? That will vary and it will, uh, Diego, he can go into it more as well, but it just depends on the actual, um, how much rock is, is located within, you know, each street and the service locations and just the um, underground, um, layers so it it may vary to where we've gone in and we've done the geotechnical work or we've done several borings and different things in the locations of the project area but once we get out there and actually see what we're dealing with it may take you know a little bit longer or a little bit less time than anticipated and um that's what where it's going to come in to where I don't know if we want to put out notices necessarily if we're going to do them um, monthly, Miss Emily, or a ha the ha whatever frequency to just let us know, let them know the phasing of what streets we're working on and that type of thing. Um, but uh, Diego, he can also go into that a little bit more. But at the same time, too, I just want to make it known that if anyone has any questions at any point in time, um, even outside of just seeing the inspector or as if uh, today one of um, you all mentioned that you couldn't get a direct answer from someone that was outside um, on your street that you weren't aware of. So please email me as the project manager. This is Demira Wyatt talking, um, email me. Um, and also my phone number is listed, but I also will give out my cell phone number because I would like to make sure that I have the interaction with the people uh, located within, you know, the project areas so we can maintain that level of communication to where we can eliminate as many instances of just, you know, um, inconsistencies that may happen. So Diego, would you like to go into that anymore as far as the geotechnical aspect of uh, the streets or anything? Just basically, 
backing up everything you said, Demira. Um, it, it is very difficult to to predict um, what's going to happen once we start breaking ground in, in the sense of how hard the rock is, how many feet we can get per day, um, any obstacles that are un unforeseen on the plans or, you know, un unknown to to everyone, uh, whether all that has the um, has a big uh, play in the time frame we get uh, per block. So I do apologize in advance for not being able to give you more specifics. Um, most likely once we start um, getting into each block within the first few days, we're, we're able to tell what that rock's gonna do um, and be able to give you a better um, time frame. And our whole instance is rather to give you just a overview of what is potentially going to happen as opposed to telling you something that's inconsistent or promise something that may not necessarily be true. So don't take it as we're not trying to answer your question specifically, but once we get into the actual construction, we can give better answers and provide better, um, you know, um, locations and timing and phasing and all of those type of things once the contractor gets into the layers of the work. And, and everybody, I think it, uh, the neighborhood needs to know, and Diego is the best to answer this question, but it's our understanding that he is going to start on Tisdale Street at uh, Tisdale and Morrow. Is that correct, Diego? That, that is correct. Uh, as of right now, our plan is to run up Tisdale. Um, it's about a block and a half, maybe. It's about 600 feet up Tisdale, and then we will fall back down tomorrow. And pretty much our, tra our trajectory is uh, run down Morrow, going up Galt, uh, hit Stra Strawbog, and then Watson, and then fall back that same way, and then keep going on Morrow. I know it's... Uh, it's a little complicated, but that's how that, that line runs. And um, pretty much how we like to tackle certain situations are by little line se segments um, that veer off into different sections of the neighborhood. It sounds complicated, but it's, it's, it just depends on what the pipe does. We, we like to follow that and like to work downstream, upstream. And this is what we will provide periodic updates on. And, um, you know, I'll work with the project team. I, I like to send out updates at least monthly, but just depending on what work is going on, we may need to send updates more frequently. So when Diego gives updates that they're moving to a new street, I'll, I'll work to get that out through our email list and post it on next door also. And so we'll be providing those updates. And sometimes the, the sequencing can change based on something they find once they get um, in the field. And so we'll provide the updates as the work is happening. All right, I see a question now asking how loud will the work be? Will it be reasonably possible to continue working from home while work is being done right outside our house? So who can answer this, Tamira or? Diego, do you want to speak some to what kind of noise um, will be generated by the work? That's also a difficult um, um, question in a sense. It, it, it depends also on the rock. If the rock is pretty hard, uh, it's going to slow us down, which is going to mean it's going to take us longer to get um, by your house. And it will also require bigger equipment, um, some hammers, out there so i i do expect it to be loud um if your office in the back side of the back side of the house i would think that you might not hear us as much compared to someone having the office right next to the street uh, I, I would say um there's a good possibility of of, of loud noise and this again is where our uh communication out to you to let you know about um when work is coming to your area it might help you to plan uh, your activities and, and at least know what to expect. Josh says, um, anything we can do to make the work easier or more enjoyable for the crew? Do they like pizza? That, that's really nice. I know um, we've worked with this company in other neighborhoods and I, I do know that the neighbors and the crew members are very responsive and the neighbors sometimes get to know them. So 
we appreciate you thinking of them. They, they are doing the hard work for us, for sure. And we have one person that does have their, have had their hand raised. Okay. So Chip, I'm gonna click allow to talk and I'm gonna ask you to unmute and I think we can hear you. All right, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Just three items. Um, first one, I wanted to comment on a prior discussion that Joe started about uh, adequacy of the lines. And I'm, I'm sure it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on in the neighborhood, but keep in mind, there's a current zoning case on Stowball. It covers about an acre of land where currently two single houses reside. The developer is asking for a zoning change so that they can replace the two single family homes with 56, up to 56 units. So that's a significant increase and that's just two lots in the area. Uh, I anticipate many more zoning changes specifically with the pressure uh, put on the area by additional tech companies coming to town. And in this specific geographic area, Project Connect having uh, rail lines, uh, two rail lines right there in the area. So just something to consider in planning. Um, a second thing I had was, I know that sometimes when there are issues with water lines, that in repairing the water lines, there'll be silt or other materials dislodged that will result in aerators being clogged. I'm just wondering if there's any suggestion to residents at times to whether they may want to remove their aerators to avoid having to replace them, things like that, or not. Um, but, but along those same lines was my third issue, and that is, this might be difficult, but is it possible for the project to create a list of issues that have arisen in earlier projects and how those were dealt with just to give folks a head up, heads up and you know possibly avoid some of the issues I, I guess what brought this to mind was simply the issue with the trash and recycling bins this morning being moved from the street to the yard there are probably other issues like that that could be uh could be put in a list and given to the residents and they could be aware of things to and maybe better ways to handle them. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is um I've taken a note um on your first um first topic about development in the neighborhood and planning for that. Um, I can let you know that Austin Water has a process for new development to, and it's called a service extension request. And so when a developer is coming in with a new project, they have to submit a plan to Austin Water and an analysis is done to determine if new infrastructure is needed to serve their demand. And um, in most cases, the developer has to build that infrastructure or pay for it. So this development you mentioned with the 56 units, they will go through that process. And um, so if lines need to be enlarged to serve their need, then they, that developer will be responsible for, for those improvements. Um, your second question about uh, silt in the water. Um, yes, and Mike might be able to speak to this, but when we do have a water shutoff for a meter to be, uh, the service line to be attached to the new water main, we do provide a notice that does recommend that customers run water on an outside spigot to clear any silt that gets into the line and also just to check their aerators and maybe to, um, to clear those out. So we'll provide that guidance 
It won't affect very many customers since the water line replacement is rather small in this project, but we'll make sure that information is provided at the right time. And then um, I, I, I love, I like your idea. Uh, we have tried with the fact sheet that we mailed out to come up with some questions and answers of things that typically come up, but I'll get with the team and see what else we can add and that we can add on our project webpage and send it out when we send out updates. Um, that's it. We're trying to do that, but I think you're right that we can add some more things to that list to our frequently asked questions. Would anyone on the team like to add anything to respond to the feedback from Chip? Yeah. Nor did the CNA. And ironically, is is Samira Wyatt? Mm -hmm. Ironically, Mr. Chip, we have a meeting tomorrow with the Project Connect team to coordinate um, items that are gonna be going on in that area. And um, just going through lessons learned within the city itself with all of our projects um, internally within the different departments and um, in the private development community, we're trying to figure out better ways to coordinate projects so we're not, um, you know, overstepping uh, uh, boundaries or over uh, working different places of where work has already been done. So that is something that we can definitely keep working on. All right, Lydia, help me know. Do we have other questions that are pending or folks? Well, it looks like Chip, you're still unmuted and it looks like you raised your hand again. So if there's anything else you want to say otherwise I can lower your hand uh, I could yeah I raised my hand because I wanted to respond sure. I appreciate the response as far as when a new uh, apartment complex is going in they put in a service request my only comment on that is that would be incremental uh, one project at a time and the it wouldn't necessarily have to replace an entire wastewater line when one project goes in, but when you have a dozen or as the city wants to have uh, 13,500 new households to this district, uh, that is something to consider possibly not incrementally, but as a larger picture. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michaela, did you have something you wanted to contribute? Um, yeah, I would just like to add, um, kind of going back to my point earlier, that we did um, um, design this project with systems planning's predictions in mind. Um, and we are taking in your feedback into account as well as working amongst ourselves between systems planning and our Project Connect team. Um, to make sure that the service um, maintains above adequate um, for the area in terms of zoning. So it's helpful for this team to know that this is um, a sort of pressing issue in your neighborhood so they can keep it top of mind. Thank you for your feedback. All right, um, I like to always just have a long pause and make sure if there's anyone who wants to submit another question or to speak, um, we'll be able to stay on for a bit longer. We wanna make sure we're answering the questions. I know we have two individuals who want a follow-up from Mike tomorrow morning. So Mike, I'll be getting that contact information over to you and Simon by email. And um, so you'll have that information of folks who want you to call them and talk to them about their property specifically. And I will mention that I have the project contacts up on the screen. If you've joined by phone, that information should be on the mailer you received or on our project webpage. And so you can contact us directly. It seems like maybe we've answered all of the questions that we have for tonight. I really appreciate you all taking the time to join us and just will reiterate that we're, we're here to make this as smooth as we can and uh, we want to be responsive to your needs and your concerns. So please, please call on us if we can help. 
And I think we can uh, wrap up the meeting. Thank you all and have a great night.